So this week we're looking at operating systems, and there's a lot of them. Uh, so what happens when we turn on our computer for the first time? Even before we begin, let's review. You remember this guy? This guy is known as my motherboard. Now, what does the motherboard do? Do you remember? Well, what it does is when I plug in my power supply to this guy, this guy routes electricity everywhere. It sends it to uh, this little chip here, to the processor if I had one plugged in, uh, to any graphics cards or modems I would have plugged in, to this little beeper. This is actually a little speaker telling me if something's wrong. Well, what happens is all that electricity, it continues to get routed until it hits my hard drive. Now, once it hits my hard drive, this guy, once it hits my hard drive, this opens up what's known as my master boot record. You don't need to remember that one, but master boot record. And the reason why is because what it does is it starts to go, all right, well, where do I begin? Because remember, the computer is very dumb. It doesn't know where to start. It just knows electricity. I have electricity. That's about it. So suddenly, this guy, let's see if you can get a little, starts to just do that. A lot. Just starts to wiggle. Not a lot. But that turns on the master boot record. And that starts to go, oh, all right, well, now I need to turn on what I call my BIOS. It looks something like this. And you can see, basically all it does is it's starting to fire all that electricity to all those different things. If you have a DVD player, if you have a CD uh, burner in your computer, it turns those things on. It turns on your hard drive. If you happen to have uh, external hard drives or any other little peripherals, uh, I.O. devices that are connected to your computer, it turns those on too. It starts to route the electricity. This part, this is not an operating system. This is simply just the, it's waking up. You can think about it in the same sense of how you wake up in the morning. You know, your, your alarm goes off, suddenly, boom, you're energized. What's your routine? Like, we all have a routine. For example, I hit the snooze alarm and then I go back to bed. And then I eventually get out of bed. Uh, and then I go to the shower, I take a shower, I get out of the shower, I dry off, and then the routine I have is my hair, do all of my hair. I do all my hair, then I brush my teeth, then I put on my deodorant, then I leave the bathroom. So that entire routine, the same thing happens with the computer. It goes through this entire BIOS until it's ready to turn on the operating system. And again, I said we have tons of them. We have the Windows uh, systems for our Microsoft computers. I'm currently on a Windows machine. Then we have what's known as the OS X. That's the Macintosh. That's the Apple's operating system. Uh, depending on which one you have right now, there are actually two. There's the previous version known as the OS X Maverick and the current one, the OS X Yosemite. And that's actually something interesting. Uh, if we think about Windows, for example, Windows uses a number system. So currently we're on Windows 8 or Windows 7 if you've never upgraded. And then we have Apple. Apple uses things like uh, Maverick, Yosemite. And if you look at the iOS for your iPhones, that one goes through, I believe we're on the uh, iOS 6 now. Whereas Android, Android all of a sudden you know, used you know, Gingerbread Man and uh, Ice Cream Bar, and they're on Lollipop right now. So why do we have a difference between these? Why don't we use numbers and why do we have weird, crazy words? Well, the reason behind that is simply it makes it easier to remember. For example, if Windows came out with Windows 8, and then, as you guys probably know, it, if you have a Windows 8, it, you know you upgraded to something called 8.1. 8.1, that sounds kind of, you know, generic and robot -y and eh, 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 eh. Well, what we do in IT is we give these major updates, these major version updates, uh, a newer, a catchier name. So instead of saying something like Android 4.5, we switch that over to something like Android Lollipop. Lollipop is just a little bit more uh, entertaining. And remember, developers are people. We're not computers. We're develop. We're we're people, so we like to you know have catchier things to do it. You know, code name lollipop versus Android 4.5. Uh, that's actually where those crazy names come from. So 
when we start up our computer, that's exactly what's going on. Hopefully you've already done this if you're watching on the YouTubes. Uh, but one of the things that we introduce is this idea of what's known as a GUI or a graphics user interface. And what that does is it just allows us to interact with the computer. You know, if we go back in time for a second, we look at uh, all those old time computers, you know, they were very DOS prompty. They looked like this. They looked very, you know, black screen, green or white text, and you typed into there. There was no thing, there was no such thing as a mouse back then. The graphic user interface just gives us a little bit of that uh, control and we get to personalize it as we see fit. In fact, I encourage you guys all to personalize your computers, your, your phones. The reason why is that's actually a good way to become a little bit better at how to use the computer. You know, something as changing your background, once you know how, yeah, it's not so scary anymore. It's like changing your oil. So this is a good example. This is my desktop at home. Don't judge it, it's actually kind of clean. It's got a nice little background, it's got a nice wallpaper, is what we like to call it. But you see we break down into really a few different sections. The first is this top portion. Those are known as my shortcut icons. Now a shortcut icon, shortcut icon isn't the program, and we'll take a look at that a little later on, but it's not actually the program, it's what I call, oh, it's what is called a shortcut it goes to that part in your computer where the program actually resides. Again, we'll take a look at that a little later. Then down below, that kind of wide bar you see on the bottom, that's known as my taskbar. And that's actually where all of my currently running programs currently reside. And you can see we actually have a few of these. So I've got Microsoft Word running, and I've got PowerPoint running, and I've got Google Chrome running, and inter my Windows Explorer. Then we have a few others. I've got Winamp and Steam for my video gaming on. No, you don't get to have my username. <laughs> but I have those running uh, in the background. Oh, then we've also got my start menu. And that's actually a very important thing. That kind of controls everything on the computer. That's where I can get access to every program that I have installed. Then over here, over on the far right, we actually have this as known as my notification area. Sometimes programs we have running, they don't actually appear on the taskbar, they just have, uh, they run in the background a little bit. For example, one of the programs I have running is known as Flux, which will change kind of the color tone of my desktop so it doesn't do much eye strain. Instead of always having that program running here on my taskbar, it's actually running in the background, so I only see it occasionally. Well, if we think about it, okay, that was Windows 7, but what about, you know, you Mac users or you uh, Windows 8 users? Well, here's what's known as the Apple's dock, and it looks exactly the same. Uh, there are subtle differences. For example, instead of a start menu, we have what's known as my finder. We also have the app launcher, and what these do is they just do the exact same thing. They give me access to all the programs on my computer. Now. You might have remembered if we take a look back at Windows 7, I have access to a lot of different files. Well, Winamp and Steam, those are actually not running right now. Those are just kind of in place. Windows 7 actually added this functionality in because it was on the Mac. I know you're saying, oh, that makes Macs better. No. In reality, it's just a it's another way for us to access files. And this is actually a good example because just recently we upgraded from the OS X Maverick to the OS X Yosemite, and so one of the major things that happened there was a major graphic user interface change. We actually call this a UI change, UI user interface. And you can see that's actually what happened. Maverick is very kind of uh, three-dimensional. It gives a lot of texture to it. Well, if you kind of look at things like Windows 8, for example, Windows 8 has this now very flat UI. And they're not the only ones. A lot of people have actually moved to this flat UI. And so you can see we still have the same functionality. Things change. And the reason why I mention this is that's something we have to kind of be aware of. As technology advances, it's not going to stay the same. So it's going to adjust and we have to adjust with it. We have to be ready for it. Because this is what Windows 8 looks like. Windows 8 
very flat UI, like I said, but very different than this. Oh my goodness. Well, you're saying now, oh, 8.1 add that functionality in. But again, once upon a time, it wasn't. So this is actually what Windows 8 looks like nowadays. And some of you, you probably like it, you don't like it. It actually does not matter. And again, when we think about the advancement of technology, this is what Windows 10 is going to look like. It actually took the ideas of Windows 8. It took that screen, that start screen that some people like, some people don't like, some people are getting used to, and it's actually condensing it back down. We're actually reverting a little bit back to Windows 7, but we're still keeping that Windows 8 functionality. People did like some parts of it. Some people didn't like other parts of it, like the fact that it got rid of the desktop. You had to actually kind of click on a little button here to get there, and it merged them together. If you're actually so inclined, you're actually tempted to kind of try this out, you can. You can actually go on Microsoft's website and download a copy for yourself. So if you're actually kind of curious, you're, you want to play around with it, download a copy, install it on one of your computers. I do recommend that you do not, do not, install this on your main computer. And the main reason is, since this is still in what we call beta, uh, it's still in testing, it's still being developed, uh, it's free, but it has a chance of breaking. And that's not a, you know, it's not gonna wipe your computer and you're gonna, you know, break it, uh, as they call. But it's better to kind of be on that safe side. You know, install this on an old computer you might have. Then you get to probably play around with it and see if you like it, you know might get you excited for Windows 10. So, we'll stop there.